All right, good morning, everybody. Sally here, and I just got back from my, my cardio jam class, and um, it, it is a fabulous, fabulous class, and I highly recommend it, and I feel, I feel great. And so a while back, I did a kind of a long-winded post where I was talking about the spirit of fear, and in general, all negativity, I'm always talking about the mind-body connection and how it's important. And so I was explaining in this long-winded post, which most people just scroll past, so I'm going to do a quick video teaching you the, the breakdown of it. And um, the, the point of the matter is, is that uh, if, when you entertain negativity, okay, whether it's being angry or bitter or whatever, it starts off as a really small thing that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but just stew for a few days. And then, and next thing you know, you start developing opinions and those opinions start to become factual in your mind. Okay. And this tainted thing that happened to you becomes your reality. And so I've watched this over and over where you become the very thing that you are focused on because that same spirit takes root in your life. Now there's been documented proof that these spirits or entities or whatever, you know, in the spiritual realm, they can actually attach themselves to physical objects. Um, if you've ever seen that show, The Haunted Collector, now there's movies left and right about oh, Annabelle, the haunted doll and stuff like that. And so while I'm kind of 50-50, I know there's a chance that can happen. I actually had it happen to me in my home one time where I had a collection of unicorns. Some jerk came in my house and said, oh my God, look at all the graven images. And I just saw the fear and the dread come over his face. Then he just started spewing out all these horrible things. And one by one, those things came true. And I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. But let me tell you, it was scary, especially the hordes of flies, these, this black mass of flies. I would wake, I'd wake up, make my husband's lunch, go back to bed. And when I would get up again, like around eight, these flies from nowhere, in my house, like thousands. So that's when I was like, you know what, I have to have an exorcism done and I gotta eradicate that spirit out of my house. That's just one of the many millions of stories. I've, ha I've had a long spiritual journey um, where I've seen things in the physical. So I know that these things are true and correct. And that's why I'm so concerned about the mind-body connection because I know these things can happen. So anyways, when I was talking about fear, um, it can start off with something small. And then it starts to spread like a virus. And um, it starts, you know, worming its way into every area of your life. And um, I finally did a special coursework to eradicate fear from my life because I was raised in sort of a devil's gonna get your Christian home. And that mindset, you know, when you're militantly raised to think that that's a normal reality. So let me get back to the spirit, spiritual side of this. And how I said like spirits can sometimes attach themselves to things. All right, when you entertain thoughts, Okay, thoughts are energy. It's a well-known fact now, you know. It's nothing hocus-pocus or spiritual or whatever. It's just kind of like a widely accepted belief now and that proven too that thoughts become energy. What do you think it's like for a demonic spirit once they keep seeing that you're sending out this, this signal to them inviting the spirit of hate, bitterness, or fear and you keep sending this out, sending this out, it's like a fishing line. You're dangling a temptation and you are inviting this energy to become life. And so it's well known that when we are born and we are being formed in, as a fetus in the uterus, that we, be, we develop a soul, we develop a spirit. And so when you have this energy that you're sending out and you're dangling it in front of these demonic forces that are out there, they're gonna eventually give it life. And where do you think they're gonna go? Why attach yourself to a, uh, a dead object when you have a nice, soft, cushy, warm human body that you can take root in? Okay, this isn't just coming from my Christian uh, upbringing. This is just stuff that I've studied because I used to be um, an exorcist uh, as just sort of like, not really a hobby, but it was just something that people noticed I had a knack for. And I used to go and clean up people's houses and get rid of demonic activity in there. So, um, 
you know, I know I've seen this in some people that I've actually known where they were entertaining this stuff and that's how they got demonically possessed. You know, um, luckily, and you know, isn't it funny how the minute people get rid of that and they have that thing eradicated from their life, suddenly the thing that was paining them and hurting them, their ails, that just kind of goes away too. I've seen that several times over. People being healed of their cancers the minute they let go of bitterness and hate in their life. Um, and I'm not saying that everyone that, you know, gets this cancer or, or gets cancer is because they're this mean, nasty, bitter person. It happens to good and bad alike, okay? But, you know, a lot of people that when they start forgiving people and they start finding joy and happiness in life, a lot of them got healed from their cancers. Um, a lot, especially when they humbled themselves before God and they asked truly for the Lord to come in and clean up their life. So, anyways, um, this this you know spirit of fear it can take root in your life and it won't just be like I'm afraid of this one thing. No, pretty soon you start you know seeing things on the news and you get more afraid and you start seeing an accident on the side of the road you get more afraid. Uh, I just recently had to kind of like break things off with someone that um, I was just getting to know her and I saw, I was like, wow, this is really a pattern. It's not just this one thing they're afraid of. They're afraid of this. Then they're accusing these other people of doing things they haven't even done yet. They've got this wild thing that somebody's going to go after their kids in school if they make a wrong move with them. And so they want me to do their dirty work for them and be, and you know, kick them out of the group because they're too afraid to be the bad guy. And so, you know, folks, um, that video that I did a while back when I first started APF is you are who you hang around. It's all in connection. All my videos, when you go to my YouTube channel and you watch them, there's a reason why they're there. You know, one thing is a stepping stone for the next and the next. And if you want to be physically healthy and you want your body to be in shape, I mean, I know our faces are going to get old, our hair is going to get thin. There's certain things that you're never going to escape from, you know, but we can all age gracefully and healthy, okay? We can still look and feel great and enjoy and be happy in our lives. And, um, you know, you don't have to, you know, be miserable and grow old, you know? So, um, you know, you have to be mentally healthy. If you're not mentally healthy, if you're not emotionally healthy, you're not gonna be physically healthy. You've gotta be healthy up here, number one. You gotta be healthy up here, number two. That, and then the physical comes, okay, as a just a natural result of that. But let me tell you, people that are angry and bitter, they look twice as old. People that are using drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and things like that to, you know, help their emotional problems, they age a lot faster you know, than people who do the hard work and crack down and they're no longer in denial. They don't get offended. They're not defensive. They admit they have an issue. And it's like, you know, it doesn't mean that you have some deep psychological thing from a child. And you know what, so what if you did? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Get help. And that may, and you know, some of, some of the stuff, like I used to suffer from a lot of anxiety. I bought a whole kit from Lucinda Bassett to deal with that. And right there in the introduction video, when she was like saying, look, let's compare this. Are you trapped in the burning building? Is a man holding a knife to your throat? Someone, does someone have a gun to your head? Are you trapped underwater and you can't get air? You know, are you in any real danger? When I heard that, I was like, oh my God, yeah, this is so ridiculous. I actually have to laugh. All these stupid, petty, petty issues that I was making a big fat deal about are gone. In just that moment, it just, the light bulb went on. I didn't need a therapy session. I didn't need to go see a counselor or psychologist. I didn't need to get on dope and medicine, and, you know? Um, and that's all maybe what some of you all need to, to get healthy. And you know, you're missing out on life. But most importantly, you're missing out on good friendships. You're gonna end up losing every single person you have because of the, your bitterness, your hate, and your fear. And so when you become so dependent on someone to do absolutely everything for you, your relationships are going to fall apart because you can't even help yourself. How are you going to be good for other people? How do you expect people to respect you when you can't even be an adult for yourself? So, you know, that's my message today. Um, clean up your acts, clean up your minds, get help if you need to, um, calm down and, you know, get your headspace straight. 
forgive, you know, don't let bitterness, you know, somebody may have just used you, chewed you up and spit you out. Take a couple days, grieve the loss, and then get back on track. And remember how valuable and beautiful life is. And just walk away from people that have done you wrong like that and move forward with your life. So, um, lesson learned. I had a feeling this would happen with her. Um, I could, And I told her that I was not interested in being the bulldog and the bully and blah, blah, blah. I knew it would probably end badly. And, you know, sure enough, you know, life is a lesson. Uh, you will never stop learning. And uh, your gut instinct, you sometimes, you know, little skills, you kind of forget to use them. And so you need a little reminder that, you know, that gut instinct of what you feel is different than fear. Fear is fast, it's panicky, your heart's racing, your, your mind is spinning. But your gut instinct, that's a calm voice that says, whoa, you know, this is, you know, this is going to turn out badly. Why do you even want to get started with someone like that? Listen, learn to listen. And so that's my motto for today. Listen to your heart, that gut instinct. Be careful who you hang around. Because if you think that that same spirit won't jump and spread like a virus to other people, that's how it, that's how it all starts. It just starts with one thing, one situation, one person. And then next thing you know, a pandemic is breaking out. So just be, I'm not saying be fearful. Use common sense. Listen to your gut in instinct and make your headspace and your heart space number one. Okay, so be careful who you hang around. And if you have an issue with fear, and you even if you have just one little small area, you need to, whatever you need to do to eradicate that out of your life, face your fears, do some exercises, talk to a coach. Um, maybe just one or two sessions is all you need. Get a grip on your life and take charge. You know, if you want that respect, you want that admiration from people, you want lots of friends, you want your husband to be madly in love with you, take ownership. Start acting like an adult today. Thank you. Zai Jen. God bless.